but let's have a look at the software in action. So here's a concept of, you know, some stairs. So as soon as we've applied the loads and applied the supports, Discovery Live gives us a, con uh, a plot of von Mises stress. And we can change that and plot other types of stress or, or deformations. So as soon as we can come up with a concept and an idea, um, we can get the results. And then what we can do is maybe record this first concept on a graph. Let's, so let's plot stress and let's plot deformation and run that simulation to get those results. Now let's make a change to the rail that supports these stairs or the two, two bottom rails. As we make those rails smaller, then as you'd expect, the deformation increases and so does the stress. So concept number two is plotted on a graph. What about if we brought the rails in towards the middle a little bit more? What impact would that have? Well, that concept doesn't have a huge impact, but it does make a slight change and we can get that information on the charts as well. Now, what if we've just got one rail? Well, as you'd expect, stress deformation increases. So maybe we need to increase the thickness of that rail. So five concepts already and I haven't had to worry about meshing, I haven't had to worry about moving from one post-processing environment back to the setup environment. It's all immediate instantaneous feedback. So as soon as I can think of something, I can get an insight and get results. What about an internal flow problem? So we've got water coming in to this inlet here and exiting at six different outlets. How is that flow um, distributed? As soon as I've picked the inlets and the outlets, Discovery Live creates the fluid volume and creates a plot of the transient CFD simulation. We can get more information from, from these results. I could get a plot of the velocities at the three outlets on the left and compare that with the velocities at three outlets on the right. And if, if they're not, if it's not evenly distributed flow, then maybe I need to look at a different concept or make a design change. So perhaps the position of the inlet could be changed. Let's do a, con a different type of plot there to see what the streamlines are doing up there and then using space claim, make a change to the geometry and see how that updates in the transient CFD simulation. Now let's do another, con another type of simulation. Let's do a thermal analysis. Assume all of these parts are aluminium. Apply a heat source or temperature boundary condition and then get a plot of the temperature in this component or the maximum temperature in this component. over time. So this is a transient CFD simulation, uh, sorry, a transient thermal simulation. What happens if we change the material properties? So we change the bottom part to copper and then we change the pipes to copper. What impact does that have? And you can see the maximum temperature reduces. Now we might be in a position where we can reduce the number of fins we need, cooling fins we need, without having a huge impact on the maximum temperature. So we're up to 17 different simulations. Now we want to do an external CFD or an external aero simulation. I bring this component in with two clicks that answers Discovery Live will set up a virtual wind tunnel for me. I didn't need to worry about defeaturing the part. I didn't need to worry about meshing. I just needed to give the software information about the direction of the flow and the position of the ground. And the post-processing, we've got lots of options. If we wanted to simulate what you would do in the wind tunnel, then we could post-process with the same sort of technique. So we can see here the driver is not having a nice experience with half a windscreen. So easily add the rest of the windscreen, rerun the simulation, and get a new set of results for this new concept. We could also take this 
design and do a modal analysis get to get some insight on the stiffness of the frame and the chassis. So we run that, we've got our modal results and because it's interactive I can quickly add some more geometry, include those extra components into the simulation and get a new set of modal results. So we're up to 20 different solutions already. Now the next thing is ANSYS Discovery Live is not creating a finite element mesh and so the level of detail um, we can work with very complex parts. We don't need to do defeaturing and, and you know extensive meshing. So I can take this graphics card from NVIDIA, the CAD for it, bring it in, very quickly set up some boundary conditions and run a modal analysis and see you know mode shape one, mode shape two, mode shape three, etc. And then okay we 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 might be happier but with this but we find at mode shape six we've got an issue so we need to add a new um, tie down point or a new hole for a screw and then constrain that. Now we can run our modal analysis again and see what impact that new design change has made. <coughs> this one's a an electronics cooling problem so again as soon as we can set up an inlet and an outlet ANSYS Discovery Live creates a fluid volume and gives us a transient CFD set of results. We've got a heat source there and um, we, we can have a look at velocities as well as temperature. We can display with different types of post-processing techniques. Um, this composite one is, is, is a bit like a smoke um, and the colours are based on velocity, temperature or pressure. If we were interested in maximum temperature then we could record that in the chart. It is a transient simulation. Then we could make some sort of design change to the flow and see what happens with the maximum temperature. Okay, we could reposition that whole board so that the heatsink is in a, a different spot and see what impact that has on maximum temperature. So we've gone through almost 30 types, 30 different simulations already. And then the last one is another structural simulation. Now we, we're only working with single parts at the moment, um, so we, we can't do the sliding contact in Discovery Live for, <coughs> for this snap um, fit clip. But what we can do is enforce the displacement and have a look at the stresses in this plastic part and then quickly work through different concepts. So we can see here actually removing some material might be the best option to bring the stresses down. So we take some material away and we get a reduction in the, the maximum stress. And there's, there's probably other areas where we can remove material. So let's go through using space claim, make some radical design changes to this and remove that material. <coughs> so you know we've we've just done ten different concepts for this plastic clip and got some good insight. Now the next thing we could do is take this to um, the next product up from ANSYS and do the sliding contact. 